Hi, thanks so much for joining me today on the Infertility Channel. My name is Randall Loy, and I'm an infertility specialist in Orlando, Florida. This is part two of a two-part series on endometriosis. Last time we talked about endometriosis, the disease and its diagnosis, and today we're gonna to be talking about endometriosis treatment. One thing that's really important to understand, and we talked about laparoscopy last time, laparoscopy is not a cure. Laparoscopy is a treatment. So you might think of endometriosis as a disease that has to be managed, not cured. So there are two problems with endometriosis, one being pain and second being infertility. With respect to pain, one might start with medical or surgical treatment and then long-term maintenance on some medical therapy. However, with respect to infertility, we consider endometriosis a surgical treatment because all of the medical things that we can do are by definition contraceptive. In other words, you're not going to conceive on the medicines that we would use to treat endometriosis. Sometimes we might use one particular treatment, a so-called GnRH agonist called Lupron, and that's a medicine that turns off the pituitary and the ovarian axis, causes the estrogen level to go very low, and we might use that for two or three months prior to treating for infertility, but largely endometriosis has to be treated surgically before going on to other treatments. And in infertility, we consider those treatments being medicines to help you ovulate better or even in vitro fertilization. So surgery, as we suggested moments ago, should be as conservative as possible. In other words, not removing organs, but restoring those organs to their normal. If there's scar tissue, remove the scar tissue. If there's endometriosis lesions, remove those, restoring the normal. With respect to medical therapy, and especially if you have pain, you could use that medicine, Lupron, that I've just mentioned. That can be used for a few months because it lowers the estrogen so much, it can cause changes in blood lipids, the good to bad cholesterol ratio, as well as triglycerides. And it might also start thinning the bones or osteoporosis. So it can be used for just a, a limited duration of time. Sometimes also with that medicine, we'll superimpose back a little bit of estrogen to take away the hot flashes and the night sweats and to decrease the risks for those other problems. Other medicines we might use for pain would be continuous oral contraceptives where just the active pills of the pack are taken month after month after month with no menstrual bleeding in between. And I've had patients on that particular regimen for many years with good effect on endometriosis. And there are some others, for example, Danazol or Danacrin, which is a testosterone derivative. And the usage of that has been limited by the side effects, really. Increases in oily skin and acne, facial and body hair growth. Sometimes one can also use a progesterone-like drug called progestin. Again, I think that the thing to remember from this episode is that surgery is best for endometriosis in most cases, but please check with your reproductive endocrinologist or your OBGYN. Now, a little bit about prognosis. There have been very few prospective randomized studies looking at endometriosis recurrence and pain and so forth, but one of the best suggests that at three years, there's about a 15% recurrence rate of any stage of endometriosis, and at five years, it's almost 40%. It's also important to work with your doctor and tell him or her when something is not working because not all therapies fit all patients. So you might be better served by one medicine or another, one surgical treatment or another. This has to be done in consultation with your doctor. I wanna leave you with an endometriosis related story. I had a young couple who were coming back for the post-operative visit some years ago. They were in their early 30s. And I was running a bit late that day and I heard this kind of clicking sound in my exam room as we were about to go in and I listened for a few seconds and it sounded like castanets. And I went in and the patient was up in stirrups being ready to be examined and her husband had taken two specula out of the warming drawer and was playing them like castanets. And I caught him and all of a sudden he had this deer in the headlights look and he got caught. He quit playing his castanets. He goes, uh, doctor, I think our patient's going to live. That's my endometriosis story for today. Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate your being here. Thanks for subscribing. If you've not subscribed yet, please do so and tell your friends about us. If you have comments or questions of a personal nature, please email me at the address below. Thanks so much and I'll see you back next week.